It was at a time of an urgency where everybody talked about electric mobility, about uh, assisted driving. It was kind of an, a scary agreement that everybody seemed to like, say, OK, this is going to happen maybe in the next five years, 10 years. Things cooled down a little bit since then, but I thought it was important at that point to talk about this fairy tale about the future and what are the consequences to our urban context. So it's about the city of the future um, and how it changes ideas of mobility, but it's also about the future of mobility and how that changes our urban context. But before I go there, um, I would like to show you some of our built work um, that is some kind of a trailer to a future of an elastic city. And um, that also asks for a different kind of aesthetic. Richard Burdett this morning showed quite interestingly the Olymp Olympic um, uh, planning and building strategies of how to expand and how to contract and how to adjust and transform to um, the current needs. And this is something that actually asks for a transformation of the city as a constant uh, negotiation process. I'm showing you here some projects from our office. This is Metropol Parasol in Sevilla, which is at the very heart of the center of downtown Seville. And also, this is kind of reactivating and remodeling an empty black spot that was there for about 30 years and now brought back to life um, with this quite iconic structure. You have an archaeology site, Roman ruins in the basement. You have a food market that was there before, brought back 30 years later. You have a panoramic terrace for tourists. You have an everyday market. So it's a very lively context as part of the everyday city. Also, um, we just finished about a year ago the new border station between Georgia and Turkey, which is also about transforming the relationship between two countries, in this case, a Muslim country and an Orthodox country, and how they try to ease the transit between both countries, not so much by reinforcing the boundaries, but actually by trying to welcoming or creating a welcoming place that's a mating place that you can rent for conferences and now even transit with your, pass uh, with your ID card and you don't need the passport anymore. Also, as a transit architecture, these are rest stops we built in Georgia. Um, there are two of them right now um, on the new highway and some of them are already placed and built in areas where there is no highway yet, but introducing already infrastructure and um, some kind of activity uh, zones, activators for regenerating the country. This is also urgent, uh, a lot of European cities, also worldwide um, situations, downtown deserted areas like cargo train stations next to train stations. Here, this is uh, in Hasselt in Belgium, or in Dusseldorf, um, we are planning this high rise right now, similar situation, an old post office area, pretty large in the very heart of Dusseldorf, now being transformed into a new kind of active urban part of town, uh, a housing project in Berlin, also introducing kind of an elastic flexibility in terms of um, what are possibilities of living and um, how that um, also changes our aesthetics about that. An office building in Hamburg, two more. This is a private villa sitting on the foundations of the existing villa, which was there before built in the 80s, now remodeled, basically also trying to find an old ground and reinterpreting that into a new contemporary building. And if all this research and innovation also questions how we transform parts of the city, it also means how do we transform the idea of building and construction. And this is one of our um, quite early um, yeah, research projects and also a build work. It's a dining hall for the University of Karlsruhe where the construction also has to be innovative, where we have to transform the way we build. This is a prefab wood building with a polyurethane coating and therefore also became part of a sustainable understanding how to improve the speed of construction, the cost, maintenance cost, um, what's the performativity of a building. All of these kind of building up the background of this fairy tale that I'm going to tell you now. It's called Away. Away is talking about a change in the future. Basically around 1984, we discovered the ozone hole. But before that, I, before I start to continue with that, I wanted to show you the condition of driving as we understand it today. We call it Shiva driving. So you do everything else while you're driving. And we heard that also before. Um, we read, we smoke, we drink, we talk. Um, but there's something on the horizon which is kind of a digital reality. And it might be closer than um, what we think. And today, we already saw that um, it seems to be even closer than what we really think. So this future um, fairy tale can be put down in five categories. We call them change, digitalize, clean, mediate, and communicate. 
the first one change goes back to this discovery of the ozone hole. This was maybe around 1985. And this completely changed the way how we consume, how we produce, and how we move. I think everything that we talk about today kind of can be traced back to that kind of eye-opening moment where also ideas of sustainability are kind of framed and discussed for the first time. We had to think about what is an ecological way to save our planet. We talked about also, or we had to think about how we can produce and be economical in a different way. It also changes the way how we socially relate to each other and the digitalization now shows us completely different ways than what we thought 25 years ago or 30 years ago. Um, the idea of culture and how we expand the boundaries of our culture understanding is important and also therefore the new aesthetics that come with it. The digitalization that happened in the last 15, 20 years kind of brought also a different way of fantasy of transportation mobility with us. We all know um, Star Trek and the beaming process to move from one place to the other. So this is kind of in our memory and maybe it was a fantasy and maybe might not be a fantasy in the future. But also in Matrix, we saw the same thing. We kind of moved into the digital. And part of it also is reality already now. We communicate with the car and the bodies or the people talk to each other in a different way. Kalarati showed this this morning as well. Um, there is kind of a cloud of information that the car brings to the city, but that the person brings into the city, and also the buildings or the streetscape brings to the city. And all of this starts to create a different kind of communication, and the effect that we have might also be that electric driving and kind of the infrastructure that comes with it creates an assisted driving um, uh, structure. It creates a different kind of flow in the city. It means that piloted driving or assisted driving and sharing driving has an effect on the city, basically minimizing and maximizing the potential of the streets in a very interesting way. This idea how the car exchanges ideas with the city and the city and the people change the idea with the cars and therefore um, also with kind of the infrastructure shows that there is an assisted driving idea which means the car moves from being a driving machine to a being driven machine. You, don't, might, you might not have to drive anymore. There are assisting systems you know, from the car to the city, but also from, um, on a micro scale and on a macro scale from kind of the GPS systems to your car, and that helps you to navigate through the city. Also, then people start to communicate in a different way, and we already have our digital body with us. Um, you see this you know, as an example here. Augmented reality is part of our everyday life now. There is more than just a physical body and maybe a representational body. There's also a digital body now, and we have these infrastructures already in place. In a humble way, it might be at this point, but um, we just see the beginning of this. The digitalization also changes the way how we create our city and how we infill our city. This digital tsunami that's washing away a lot of things that we take for granted right now. If a car knows where to drive, if we know how to walk, if we understand who is in our way and who allows us to um, be mobilized in the city, you might not need all the streets and si uh, street lights and signs anymore because the car knows where to go. We know where a car comes. We get kind of warned. We get kind of maneuvered in a different way. So there's kind of a clearance of that whole stuff that's in our street streetscapes, um, and our view back to the city might be um, in the foreground. Or, since the car knows where to go, it doesn't need any light anymore to, know, to see where we are going. So again, that part, the infrastructure that's so dominant right now in our everyday kind of experience of a night city might disappear and we can look back at the city again. So again, it replaces something that was just maybe important for 100 years, car lights to know where we are going. Also, with the digitalization, we can minimize the streets the, the number of the lanes because you can get more cars onto one, uh, onto one lane and therefore make it more compact and bring back space to the city. The sidewalks can be bigger again or the buildings actually can uh, start to breathe or um, to thicken up. There's extra space now. The city can grow within the city and doesn't have to necessarily grow at the perimeters. So this can be maybe used for energy uh, devices like solar panels or light reflecting systems. It could become a space for more green in the city. It could become a space for cultural places or even new forms of infrastructure and mobility. Space for us, space of possibilities basically for us to imagine and to come up with ideas in the future. 
But also, there's a certain transparency, a data variance that comes with it. And if you see 3D models of a city, that's all kind of exterior 3D models. But if you imagine that everybody who builds, or every architect who has to hand in um, information and data about the buildings when they ask for building permit, then at some point you also know how to see into the building, you get the understanding of the whole interior organization, and even by tracking devices and uh, monitoring of uh, performances, you understand what's kind of the, the life cycle, what is the kind of the dynamic, what is the use of buildings inside. So there's a whole, com a whole new complexity coming out at some point. And even cars, that can do more than just driving, in this case they also take pictures of movies, videos, um, us then of course for a different form of protection and another blurring, another kind of erasing, where now you might be in control of what's visible or not, um, or not the objects but the buildings or the, the, the cars or the persons itself who are moving actually can be blurred. So there's a whole new form of negoti negotiation again, like what's visible and what's invisible in this digital reality. Um, the, third as uh, the fourth aspect, mediate, is about how we then start to communicate with this extra layer that's created in the city. It is kind of a digital crust um, that sits on top of buildings now and on top of streets. It's this extra space of uh, negotiation and um, elasticity that I'm talking about, where inside and outside start to blur, where certain informations between private and public might be renegotiable, um, where questions of exposed and concealed or what kind of information you want to share um, with the outside when you're living you know, in your private apartment has to be new uh, discussed. And these are just a couple of images to show how also the cars and mobility start to become part of that elastic um, system. So the streetscape now becomes this augmented reality or already is this augmented reality where you start to bring um, information about the programs about offers, about availabilities, about um, certain protection modes into the streetscape. And the last point, communicate, is about that car that is not driving anymore. It's actually driving you, or it's not driven anymore, it's driving you, or you are not the driver anymore, you are the one who is being driven. So it becomes an experience machine rather than um, a car. And so from inside the car, the windshield becomes this interface between you and the city. This might be the view then to, uh, into the street. But in a way, you can also selectively program it with your profile, with your status, maybe your mood that you're in. You have certain selective uh, filters, in this case, wandering. You might just see nature in the city while you're driving through the city. Um, or you're in the flirting mode, flirting status, um, and that might be kind of the space that you're navigating through the city. It becomes kind of this new elastic poking city, something that is more of an, um, uh, kind of a, a suggestion um, to react or to be involved rather than um, kind of a defined environment. And it's kind of poked space, this poked data, we also call it touching data, um, then it's kind of a metaphorical space that we inhabit, that we kind of have to understand and discover. And to end this presentation, and also to be in your time frame. Uh, this is a little movie about Pokeville, um, as it might look. It might need a little second to load up, but. So this is our future city called Pokeville. There was also sound on it, maybe not. Yeah, it's okay. And if all this becomes true, 
the ocean hole will close again and we will live ever, forever and ever. Thank you. <laughs>